took another look at this cheapo gasket that I got in and realized that when I shift this over that almost all these holes line up pretty well and then what happens is this bunches up right here so my point is if I enlarge this hole to allow this corner to move down a little bit more then what's going to happen is I think this gasket will line up over here the same thing with these top holes they actually line up pretty good right now so so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to try and salvage this uh, this no-name cheapo gasket well I elongated this hole right here cut out a little bit of the meat on the inside of that gasket that let the gasket shift over that way and now I've got a pretty decent fit on this gasket I think I can make this work okay uh, I put a thin film of blue RTV sealant on the uh, case then I installed the gasket then I put another thin film of RTV then I installed the this side of the case which is only held on by two screws this one here and this one here so I tighten those up not not to the full torque yet because I don't want to squeeze out too much of the uh, the silicone and then I tap the case to get it seated I had a couple of gaps here and there and uh, in order to make sure that it's all pulled together um, installing some C clamps temporarily and I've only tightened those up just enough so I can squeeze a little bit out so I can see that I don't have any gaps and that's looking pretty good uh, looks like on this side here I might still have a little bit of a gap so let's see if I can get one more clamp and clamp this corner right here well I just finished putting this all back together got the silicone in there and everything and then I just noticed that this Kickstarter doesn't seem to be hmm what's wrong with that Kickstarter I'm losing my mind all right <laughs> for a second there I thought I forgot to install the return spring because I couldn't remember where it went um, but now I realize that that goes on the outside here of the case underneath the right hand case so there's the hole right there that it goes in so um okay all right i looked up the screw that i had snapped or had to grind out i should say um and it's uh, about three dollars to order one from a honda dealer but then i noticed that it gave the size six by thirty millimeters so i thought well just for that give it i'll check my hardware store and sure enough in the midwest fasteners section of my hardware store there were metric screws with this style head on it and 6x30 was in there so looks like I lucked out that screw by the way was 65 cents so I'm glad I didn't order the Honda one while I'm waiting for the uh, silicone to cure I'm going to take apart the oil pump the reason why I want to take the oil pump apart is because in the process of grinding off that head of that screw I got all these metal filings all over the place and I'm sure some of them had gotten down inside there and that's the last place I want those to be so if I take these two screws out hopefully without too much fuss I can get this plate off I can take the little rotors out I clean the whole housing out really well and then put it all back together now how did I know those screws were going to be seized in there all right, well, I'm not falling for this one again, where I end up ruining the screws, taking them out, and then have to drill them out and go through this whole escapade again. I am going to take these little rings off so they don't get lost, and I'm going to try and just clean the heck out of this thing without taking it apart. It's been a few days since I've been down here working on the XR. Um, 
By now, all the silicone has uh, cured fully, so I took all the clamps off. And uh, I had washed out the uh, oil pump best I could, try and make sure there wasn't any uh, debris inside the uh, pump without actually disassembling the pump. Again, because these two screws are stuck really bad, and I just don't want to go through the, uh, the trouble of what might be involved in getting those out. And that's good and uh, cleaned up. <clears throat> and now I'm going to install the uh, little sector gear that goes on the end of the uh, shifting drum. So that's this here. So basically you get these four pins that are going to go in these holes. And once I get these four pins in, then it's just a matter of sticking this sector gear on. <clears throat> Pretty much it's really only one way it can go on because these two pins are spaced further away than these two pins. So it's going to go on like this. There. Come on. All right. The pain in the butt. I got to put the camera down. Okay, I was putting it on wrong. When you put the four pins in, they're all the same length, but two of the holes are deeper. So that makes these two pins stick out further. So those are the two pins that are going to go into the holes here. Obviously, if I put this on the wrong way, then the hole's not going to line up to put the bolt in. So that means you can only put it on this way. So, and that is easy as that. And now I'm going to install the bolt. Now I'm going to install this, uh, it's like a cam follower, basically keeps the, uh, the uh, drum in the various different positions. And what I've done is I've loosely installed this bolt, got the spring in the correct position here, it hooks right in this little detent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down on this and then finish tightening the, uh, the screw now, just like that. Alternatively, I guess you could install this first before you install this sector gear and just pull this down while you're installing the sector gear. All right, I've got the shifting mechanism. I've now cleaned up the, uh, the shaft on the end here. There was some heavy oxidation on it. There's some pitting on here, but that's actually on the outside of the case, not the part where the seal rides. That's still in good shape. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, lube on here just to uh, help it go through the seal. I don't wanna damage the seal. Don't! Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So, this obviously has to be installed before this sector gear is installed because this needs to go behind the sector gear and grab onto those pins and that's what basically when this goes back and forth and grabs the pins that's what moves that whole damn thing so that was a mistake so rather than pull this all the way out again I'm just gonna just gonna take the sector gear off slide that in and then put the sector gear back on and I'm not even gonna take this off I'll just pull this down like I talked about doing all right so take that off this, of course, the spring brings that up. Now I can slide this down into position. Now I've got to get the sector gear back on, but I've got to pull this down and hold it while I'm doing that, so I'm going to put the camera down. Next, you install this little tiny spring right here. This spring uh, is very important because it uh, basically is what keeps this thrown out this way so that uh, it keeps that ratcheting effect going. And now there's a return spring on this that's going to go in. Let's see if I screwed up how that goes in yet. All right, looks like this return spring is going to just slide down on here, and then you're going to spread this apart, and it looks like this top part of the spring is going to ride right on that indent right there, and the bottom is going to ride in this indent on the bottom there, and it's going to straddle this pin right here. 
All right, this is a really strong spring. So uh, what I did was I took a large blade screwdriver and stuck it in between here, twisted it to open it up. And once you get it onto the pin, uh, then it's a matter of just walking it down into position. All right, I believe that's the correct position for this spring, just like that. Now before I go any further, I'm going to tighten these down to the correct torque value. Uh, this bolt right here, in the service manual, they give a uh, torque value of 9 foot-pounds. So I'm going to torque that to 9 foot-pounds. For some reason, they talk about installing this bolt and they don't bother giving you the uh, torque value. But since it's uh, roughly the same size as this one, I'm going to torque this one to 9 foot-pounds also. Um, I kind of wish that it actually said specifically what the torque was on this, but it doesn't. It also makes no reference to whether or not there should be any uh, thread locking um, thread locking chemical on either one of these and there wasn't any when I dis wasn't any indication of any on there when I disassembled it so I'm not going to put any on now